And the factors for awakening, calm and concentration, are two separate factors. Calm is said to be a precondition for concentration. It grows out of refreshment. It's basically the mind at its ease. You've been refreshed by the breath, refreshed by comfortable feelings, and now you let them calm down with a sense of well-being. And this is a necessary factor for concentration, whether it's concentration while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, or concentration as you're going around in the world. If you're feeling anxious, ill at ease, worked up about things, it's hard to get the mind to settle down. Because when the mind settles down, concentration is a good translation for a samadhi, because the mind is firmly intent. With ease, however, you're beginning to settle down. And so you have to induce it. The Buddha teaches how to induce it through fabrication in his instructions on breath meditation. You work with bodily fabrication, in other words, the way you breathe. You try to breathe in a way that's refreshing, gives you energy, and then you allow it to calm down. He also speaks of mental fabrication, the perceptions and feelings you have. You try to develop intense feelings of pleasure, intense feelings of rapture or refreshment. And when the mind has been energized, refreshed, then you allow it to calm down. In other words, you find feelings that are more refined, just as you found a breath that was more refined, perceptions that are more refined. Take the perception of the breath and the body. If you perceive it as the air coming in and out through the nose, that allows you to settle down to one level. But if you think of it as the energy that suffuses every cell in the body, and it's all connected to the nerves and the blood vessels, that's a more calming perception. It requires less energy to breathe. And you're less concerned about deciding when to breathe in, when to breathe out. You're getting closer and closer to what John Lee calls the profound breath, where everything is very, very still. And if you're out and about in the world trying to get the mind concentrated, firmly intent, you can also use verbal fabrication, the way you talk to yourself. This is a time of great social anxiety, but with the, the pandemic and the social unrest and just general lack of trust in this country. As I've been hearing a lot of people talking about how they have a lot of anxiety about going out. We have to talk to yourself. You have to remind yourself the real dangers in life are not other people. Well, as the Sartre said, the hell is other people. No, hell is your own mind. And the dangers that other people can pose to you are nothing compared to the dangers you pose to yourself. But the dangers you pose to yourself are things that you can control. Other people, it's hard to control. But you can control your thoughts, your words, your deeds, and these are the true measure of where you're going to go how well you're going to fare. And so think about that, that your most valuable treasures are your actions. And if you're safe in your actions, you're safe. There may be the results of past actions lying in wait for you someplace, but again, once that's taken care of, then you're freed. And the important thing is how you carry your thoughts and words and deeds around. And if you're mindful and alert, okay, you've got dangers under control. So think in that way. So it gives a sense to arise 
<clears throat> gives rise to a sense of refreshment. That way the mind can calm down. It's the same when you're sitting here and meditating. Sometimes you need to engage in some verbal fabrication. This is what the different re recollections are for. The Buddha says there are times when you try to focus on the breath and it seems like there's a fever in the breath. You focus on feelings, there's a fever in the feelings. You focus on the mind, there's a fever in the mind. Okay, you drop those topics and you think about the Buddha or the Dhamma or the Sangha, whatever you find inspiring. Let them into the world of your mind, because the world of your mind is determined by who you allow inside. If you're going to start thinking unskillful thoughts, you have a tendency to block out certain people. It's as if those people had never existed in the world, the John Mun, the John Lee, Obaskeki, the Buddha. And that way you're free to think your unskillful thoughts. But when you realize that this is not healthy, you want to let them back in. So think about the Buddha, that time when Venerable Sona was going to disrobe. He'd been doing walking meditation to the point where his feet were bleeding, and he got discouraged. He thought, well, maybe I can go back and be a layperson. I can still make merit. And the Buddha read his mind. So he disappeared from Vulture Peak and appeared right in front of Sona. You can imagine how Sona felt. On the one hand, embarrassed, but on the other hand, a strong sense of gratitude to the Buddha for caring enough. So let that sense of the Buddha into your world, the world of your mind. Or if you prefer, you can have any of the Ajans. Or you can think about the Dhamma. Here again, the Dhamma teaches us that what's really important in life is the state of the mind. And the state of the mind is something you can train. And if you've been heedless in the past, well, that doesn't mean you're going to have to be heedless in the future. There's that saying that if you were heedless but now are heedful, you illumine the world, like the moon when it's released from the clouds. It is possible to change your ways. As the Buddha said, if it were not possible for people to drop unskillful habits and to develop skillful ones, there'd be no point in his teaching. So he taught, which means, okay, there is a point, which means that you can change. So even though the Dharma sometimes seems forbidding, as it points out that this is unskillful, that's unskillful, its purpose is compassionate. And so take comfort in the Dharma, take comfort in the Buddha and the Sangha. And then when the mind has soothed its fevers, then you can get back to the breath, refreshed, calm down, and ready to go into concentration. So concentration is strong, but it comes best when you do it with a sense of ease, when you can put yourself at ease. And that's the purpose of this factor for awakening.